Patrick Cook here. So welcome to session seven of our tutorial series that I've uh, titled Fun with Mandelbulb Mutations. So let's, uh, let's continue this, this discussion about the mutagen. Now, up to this point, uh, I, had, uh, I had gone over some use cases, um, the, the, uh, uh, using mutagen to increase productivity and creativity, using mutagen to test uh, various uh, permutations of the, the, uh, the formula construct, okay? And I also uh, demonstrated how we can actually use the mutagen to create keyframes, all right? So that we can build an animation where the, uh, where the mutagen will provide us with mutations um, that, are, uh, that uh, can be used as keyframes for the animation of the formula construct not the animation of the camera. We still have to do that uh, on our own, but the mutation of the formula construct. Uh, now, keep in mind that when I say formula construct, I'm referring to the formula, uh, the, the formula construction. Um, and the formula construction has, uh, it involves the hybrid mode, it involves the assigned formulas, and it involves the properties of the assigned formulas, and it also involves the iteration count, okay? Now, up to this point, we've been talking about generalities. In order to get the best use out of the mutagen, all right, as possible, uh, to be able to utilize it for, you know, the three use cases that we had talked about up to this point. It's, it's important that we thoroughly understand what the mutage, uh, mutagen tool is and what it does and how it does it, okay? That's what we want to start talking about in this session. Now, just in review, looking at our mutagen window, all right, just in review, when you pull in a, I'm going to call it a base formula construct from the main editor, that's right here, okay, the mutagen will begin to mutate based upon that formula construct and create two generations, all right, two paths that are comprised of children or muted mutations. All right, it will generate a, a generation this way and a generation this way. Now, each subsequent mutation is based upon the previous mutation. This is just in review. I had mentioned this uh, earlier in the tutorial series. So for instance, the mutation that occurs here, all right, will be based upon the formula construct of the previous mutation. And this mutation will be based upon the previous mutation, which in this case happens to be the base mu uh, mutation, all right? So each subsequent mutation in the generation branch all right, will be based upon the previous mutation or the base within that generation. All right. So, okay. So it's important to understand that because basically what I just said is the reason why the mutations get more and more uh, diverse as they, as the the mutations or the children are created along the generation path. Now, with all that in mind, it is now time to talk about these controls. These controls basically will give you mutations all the way from no mutations at all, all the way out to 
uh, really very diverse mutations along the generation paths, okay? Now, there's, there's two columns basically right here. Right here, mutation type probability. And that basically means that that is the likelihood of a, uh, of a, uh, a mutation type being applied to each of the children along the two generation paths. All right, so that's the mutation type probability, the likeliness of a uh, of a uh, of a uh, a mutation uh, being a, a mutation option being applied. Now this other column is strength. All right, so we can think of the strength as the degree to which the mutation type probability will be applied. All right, I'll just keep that in mind because let's talk about, let's, let's summarize with each of these options. All right, these are options, which each of these options do, okay? And then we'll get back to uh, uh, applying the probability and the strength to better understand what these options are and what they do. Now, this first option, exchange, add, and remove formulas, is basically that, all right? And it will, <clears throat> if this probability is set, let me disable all of them. If this probability is set higher, all the way to the left, the probability is none. All right, that's what this means by disable all. If you, I'm going to hit this button right here, disable all, and watch this slider. It'll snap back to the far left. And here we go. So I have disabled or I have set the mutation type probability to none. So all the way, all of these, can, all of these sliders, all the way to the left is no probability. No probability. And it, it, when there's no probability, the strength value does not apply. Obviously, you can't have a degree uh, of strength on a, an option that is disabled or has no probability. Okay? So this in uh, exchange, add, and remove formulas is... A, it's an option that will actually do one of three things. It'll either exchange formulas in the formula construct, or it will add a formula to the formula construct, or remove a formula. Now, keep in mind that these options all right, are applied every time a mutation child is created. All right, so these options here certainly apply to the mutation that occurs from the base to the first child, all right, of the first generation and of the second generation, but these options would also apply to the next mutation and to the next mutation. Okay. So all of these options apply to all of the mutations, all right? So this is what it does. It will either exchange, add, or remove formulas from the formula construct of each of the mutation children. Okay, I'm gonna, we're gonna demonstrate this a little bit as we move ahead, all right? So let's, uh, let's end this session now. We're right about at our 10 minute mark. And just, just kind of get a handle on this probability and the strength. The probability, all the way to the left, the probability is none. All the way to the right, the probability is at the greatest. Okay? All right. 
So uh, let's pick this up in the next session, session number eight, and uh, I'll see you there.